Now to the University of Idaho murder case. The family of Ethan Chapin, one of the four students killed in an off-campus house last November, is speaking for the first time. Kena Whitworth has the story. Good morning, Kena. Yeah, George, good morning. Jim and Stacy Chapin say they've been receiving supportive messages from people around the world. I went and met them at the Tulip Farm where Ethan spent his summers working to see how they're honoring their son's memory. Pushing through the earth, the yellow and white tulips bearing the name Ethan Smile, meeting the sun for the first time. It's just turned into something so special, yeah. something tangible that represents him now. Nearly five months ago, the 20-year-old was murdered, along with his girlfriend, Zana Kernodal, and her roommates, Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan, in that off-campus home at the University of Idaho. It's tough. Tough not have it here. Stacy and I get up and watch the sunrise and drink our coffee and cry in your coffee. Ethan's parents, Jim and Stacy, speaking out for the first time. And I love to hug him. Yeah, I'd no, give they, anything to just be able to hug him. You just always make sure you, <laughs> you just always hug your kid. Ethan, the eldest of triplets, so full of joy. He spent his last day on this earth with his siblings. The three seen here at his sister Maisie's sorority formal before spending time with Xana at his Sigma Chi fraternity and then Xana's home at 1122 King Street, where they were murdered just hours later. That house set to be demolished. You think stuff like that never happens. You do, you think it happens to other people, but I'm telling you, if it can happen to us, it can happen to anybody. Both Maisie and Hunter are now back at school, preparing to graduate without their brother. Hunter, he was kind of Ethan's wingman. I mean, you realize when you're a triplet, you have spent your whole life together, the three of them. Stacy and Jim lean on each other in what they're calling a shuddersome year of firsts, doing things they've always done, but for the first time without Ethan, preparing for milestones. The one we have coming up first, 21st birthday. That's going to be we tough. We have talked about the kids' 21st birthday <laughs> forever. We yeah. have. That's going to be tricky. <laughs> yeah, that is going to be mm -hmm. a tricky time. Yep. Here at Tulip Valley Farms, Ethan worked in the fields planting bulbs, and now he's being remembered with his own. Ethan smile. There have been, right now, 80,000 bulbs sold. The Chapins have big intentions to give back to both their communities in Skagit Valley, Washington, where Ethan grew up, and Moscow, Idaho, with scholarships funded by proceeds from the Ethan Smile Foundation. We've created something that is good, that Ethan would love. He loved people, mm -hmm. he loved a great adventure, yeah. and he was inclusive. If we could touch as many lives as he touched in 20 years in our lifetime, the world would be a better place. Now they know they have a lot of hard days ahead. At the end of June, Brian Koberger, the suspect in these murders, will appear in court in Moscow, Idaho, for a preliminary hearing. But Stacy says in the meantime, she's getting pictures from people who have planted those Ethan Smile bulbs. And she says watching them grow really helps. And George, as you heard her say, they've sold at least 80,000 so far. Oh, my. Hmm. What a touching word. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kana.